What's up, Athena fam? My name is Jay Yokiel, Facility Advisor for Athena Ag. I have 14 years of cannabis cultivation experience and manage 40 strain specific zones, over 20,000 square feet of canopy. I also study environmental science and plant biology at Ohio University. In this five video series, we'll go over the art of fine tuning your irrigation strategy to influence plant growth, maximize yield, and optimize quality. We'll show you how to leverage technology and data to make informed decisions about when and how much to irrigate. The key to achieving optimal plant growth depends on making precise adjustments to both the environment and the root zone. Once all environmental factors are properly managed, implementing a proper irrigation strategy can elevate your garden to the next level. I cannot stress this enough. Running a high substrate EC may burn your plants when all environmental factors are not within the correct ranges. Make sure to reference our environmentals chart to make sure your environment is completely dialed in before attempting to run an elevated EC in the substrate. Now let's talk about the necessary tools required to fine tune your irrigation strategy. Probably the two most important tools we have in the garden, the EC and pH meter. To give our plants the most effective nutrient solution, we need to make sure our nutrient concentration and pH is at optimal levels. Be sure to calibrate these meters often. To be able to see the EC within the root zone, a substrate sensor is crucial for us to decide when to irrigate and for how long. A precise irrigation strategy can require up to 20 irrigation events, sometimes more. So a timer or controller that will allow you to program multiple events is really important. And last but not least, a dialed in irrigation setup. This will allow us to provide nutrient solution to our plants in equal and precise amounts. A proper irrigation setup would include a pressure assessing pump, particulate filters, and micro irrigation emitters such as quarter gallon and half gallon per hour NetFM emitters. I won't go into too much detail about irrigation setup on this video, but if you're looking to get a professional irrigation setup designed for your facility, check out the meter designs. They can help take the guesswork out of irrigation design and make installation more efficient by creating fertigation and irrigation plan sets and rendering. Now that you understand the necessary tools needed for implementing a successful irrigation strategy, let's go over some of the common irrigation terms. Volumetric water content percent, or VWC, the volume of water a substrate is holding at any given time. Shot, a single irrigation event. Maintenance shots, P2 irrigation events that maintain your peak VWC percent target throughout the day. Field capacity, the maximum water holding point of a substrate, or the runoff point of a substrate. Full saturation, when a substrate can no longer hold any more water and VWC percent can no longer increase. Runoff, the water that is drained from a substrate. Dryback, the period between irrigation events when the substrate is drying out. This is the difference in VWC percent from the last irrigation event of the day to the first irrigation event of the following day. Additional dryback, the decrease in VWC percent that occurs during P3 after the lights turn on and before the first irrigation event of the day. I like to use the saying, transpiration before irrigation. Poor water EC, or PWEC. The EC of the water within the pores of the substrate. We also refer to this as substrate EC in these videos. Input EC, the EC of a solution applied through irrigation events. Peak VWC percent target. The VWC percent established by the last P1 event and maintained through the day by P2 phase. EC stacking. The strategy of limiting runoff and or increasing dryback to increase substrate EC. Now let's talk about your substrate. Selecting the correct substrate size will allow you to have more control over your VWC percent and substrate EC. Think of a one gallon pot as a Ferrari and a five gallon pot as a semi truck. The Ferrari is much more agile compared to the semi truck making it easier to change directions and weave through traffic to our desired destination more quickly. The same concept applies to controlling our substrate EC and VWC percent. The smaller the substrate size, the faster our dryback will be, making it easier to adjust water content and substrate EC with strategic irrigation events. The type of substrate size we use needs to be predictable and consistent. This is why I recommend using either 100% cocoa or rock wool. Both substrates consist of a single texture throughout and do not contain any aeration materials such as perlite that could give us false readings when using our substrate sensors. In my opinion, two gallon cocoa pots or six by six rock wool cubes are the most ideal substrates for a precise irrigation strategy. Both substrates have predictable drybacks and are easily manipulated with irrigation events. Thank you for joining me in this video. We covered the essential tools and terms of precision irrigation. 
setting the foundation for optimizing plant growth. Understanding these basics is vital for a successful irrigation strategy, but we have just scratched the surface of precision irrigation. In our next video, we'll dive into crop steering and irrigation events. We'll explore how we can control and fine tune plant growth, ensuring that every drop of water counts and every crop thrives to its fullest potential. So if you're ready to take your precision irrigation game to the next level and maximize the potential of your garden, make sure to watch the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay connected with us as we continue to discover how to create a precision irrigation strategy.